Okay, good afternoon. So my, my paper is entitled Rolando Ripaldo, the Filipino Philosopher of the Margins. This paper explores on the contribution of Rolando Ripaldo or for his students and close friends, Dr. Rips, to Filipino philosophy. Dr. Rips is known not only for his dedication in the articulation of Filipino philosophy, but also for banning and showcasing it to the international philosophical community. It was for this reason that his name is almost synonymous to Filipino philosophy, for if one will ask if there is Filipino philosophy, it will be better to confront and ask him if he had read the works of Dr. Ripaldo. Though his contributions were not measured, it is quite an irony that there are only few scholars of philosophy who attempted to write about his continuing legacy. His name was not even included in the list of Filipino philosophers by a fellow Paul in his book entitled Doing Philosophy in the Philippines. The only scholars, the only scholars who wrote about him are Dr. Yu, JJ, and also Dr. Del Padre himself. Another quite scenario, particular scenario, was that Dr. Drips was not even honored and given tribute during the 40th year anniversary major conference of the AP entitled Legacy Lectures, Engaging Our Philosophical Pioneers, which was held in De La Salle University, where in their honor of Bulay, O, D, Garcia, Portero, Perios, Mendoza, Mercado, D, Quito, Reyes, Tempresa, and D, Bello. With all of this, we could consider him, therefore, as a Filipino philosopher at the margins. The purpose of this paper is to explore on the contribution of Dr. Ripaldo to Filipino philosophy for its high time to assess the magnitude of his legacy. So in order to do this, I divided my paper into three. First is the intellectual biography. Second, the articulation of Filipino philosophy. And third, his contribution in institutionalizing and inter internationalizing Filipino philosophy. So let us have the first discussion, intellectual biography. Dr. Drips was a unique thinker. He was born from a different philosophical tradition. He had his initial philosophical training in Mindanao State University at Karabi, MSU unlike the usual philosophy school, which is Tunism is different because it offers diverse philosophical heritages. MSU that time offers an eclectic multicultural intellectual climate for besides its local philosophers whom I suppose were trained scholastics. It also became the poster home of American Peace Corps philosophy teachers and volunteers. Another word version is that he was also exposed to studying Oriental philosophy because one of the professors there was an expert of Indian, Japanese, and Chinese philosophy. After the graduating from college, he followed the MSU for about some time and later on decided to study masters in UP from 1973-1975. According to Ripaldo, he studied in UP because his philosophical temperament and disposition at that time was analytic, and UP was a second was a good grounding ever since it was introduced by Pasquale, a well-known Filipino student of Petron Brazil. After finishing from his MA, he went to MSU as a faculty member. There he was assigned to teach basic Barney philosophy courses, including areas such as Japanese philosophy, Chinese philosophy, Indian, philosophy of education, philosophy of person, and philosophy of history. With this, he began his works on traditional approach of doing philosophy, Filipino philosophy. In 1994, he decided to teach in the metropole. He found intellectual refuge in the La Salle University, thereby he worked on synthesizing his taxonomy about Filipino philosophy and also his critical bibliography. After his retirement in 20, 2007, he decided to dedicate his time to the management of the NPRS and editorship of the Sophia Jordan until his entirety death in 2017. So for the second, articulation of Filipino philosophy. Rolando Ripaldo's project is not merely on articulating Filipino philosophy, but his goal is to recapture an ideology for nation building. Such ideology for him were a set of integrated ideas that serve as a practical guide to maintain and achieve the desired works of individual, a class, and a nation. That is a nationalist in orientation in order to attain the goal of making the Philippines as a nation 
Because for him, philosophy is not an activity. It's not just an activity that is concerned with the clarification of meaning of concepts, but it should also reconstruct an integrated view of philosophical subject and synthetic solution to a philosophical problem. With this project, he wanted to contribute to the intellectual heritage of the Philippines as a nation. For him, the great nationalist task is to, to be a genuine philosopher, a philosopher who does not only mimic ideas but also innovates, creates a new path of philosophizing that offers a novel insight of philosophical thinking and reflection. So, his concern for Filipino philosophy started when he was teaching in MSU in the middle 1970s. He was assigned in teaching some occasional subjects, just Japanese and Chinese, and he then realized that philosophy that he was teaching was alien in origin and not contextually Filipino, that is grounded in philosophical Filipino historical experiences. He thereby realized the need to explore in our intellectual heritage. According to him, such alienation was a result of a negative conception of philosophy in the country, wherein philosophy is not considered as a discipline in a career due to exclusive character in the camp that is only offered in the convents and seminaries. Another misconception is because another misconception is because universities and colleges in the country offers only three to six units of philosophy courses that is only limited to logic and philosophy of man and ethics which caused a narrow understanding of philosophy. Though some universities and colleges were upgraded in terms of philosophy, for him, these were still limited, for it only focuses in just one philosophical tradition, such as, maybe it's Thomism, analytic, or continental philosophy, which all the more added to the no blue punch to our discipline. With this, he started to work on his first approach on Philippine philosophy, the traditional approach, wherein he tried to work an individual philosopher using Greek model. But before we proceed to discuss it further his approach, let us look into how did Ripaldo define Filipino philosophy. And in doing so, let us look into the definition of the term Filipino and philosophy. The term Filipino, according to Ripaldo, Ripaldo was aware that the term Filipino is a historical concept that is developed in the course of Philippine history. As a Mindanao, he was aware that this term is a slippery, elusive, and problematic. It was for this reason that as starting point, he used the constitutional approach or concept of Filipino, for according to him, this concept is the most inclusive. Such concept was later on philosophically justified by Gripaldo by following in Postrado's framework in his ethic of the sectionism. For him, Filipino philosophy should be understood in terms of the not of past-present, but present-future-oriented. This line of thinking is near to our understanding of Filipino philosophy as an apostolary category. Though it's geared toward the present-future, Ripaldo insisted that it's still important to trace its intellectual and biblical core by looking at the philosophers in the country via the traditional Western model approach. Now, for philosophy, for Ripaldo, have shades of different meanings. He recognized the various philosophers from history of philosophy, from ancient to contemporary, have different understanding of philosophy. Such instances only shows the definition of philosophy as the love of wisdom has been challenged since time immemorial of philosophical flourishing. That's why he noted that in the light of the development of historical philosophy, a social scientist can no longer strongly argue from the traditional definition of philosophy. He has to transcend the biases of each epoch or school of philosophy and consider all their philosophical claims and activities. And according to him, he has to recognize in this particular respect religious science, doctrine of family resemblances. Now, what is the task of a genuine Filipino philosopher? It is important to note that Ripaldo made the distinction between teachers of philosophy, philosophers, and genuine philosophers and historians of philosophy. The first is simply those teachers of philosophy who teaches in schools and universities. The second and the third is quite interesting. It's because, but before that, let us first consider the relationship of the second and the third with the fourth. For Gripaldo, there are scholars of philosophy and historians of philosophy. In order to explain it further, he made an analogy with that of Russell and Copelson. 
Russell is a well-known scholar of philosophy and also a historian of philosophy, whereas Dr. Stone is only a historian of philosophy. As historian of philosophy, both Russell and Dr. Stone use traditional approach wherein they focus on the identification and enumeration of individual philosophers as members of a certain period. Now, the fact of claim that Russell is far better than Dr. Stone is because Russell made it to be a genuine philosopher. In the discipline of philosophy itself, there are philosophers and scholars of philosophy. Philosophers, according to him, are thinkers who have their own perspective about life, knowledge, languages, language, etc., the world, and the life. Many of these philosophical views are systematized, and scholars of philosophy are those who write the ideas of philosophers about the history of philosophy or about communal philosophy. Now, to master a philosoph philosopher's philosophy, or to master a field of specialization, okay, within a discipline is good according to him. But we need to grow either outside or within the philosopher. One may not ought to be a kanchan forever. If by kanchan, according to him, we may mean simply about Mahmoud Khan's ideas in our lectures and writings. That is to say, we don't innovate. We simply imitate Kant. We mimic his ideas and probably his mannerism. We can quote and paraphrase three critics cover to cover, know the in and outs of his life and so on, and we become an intellectual through him. In short, we have according to him to become a genuine philosopher, it's because for him we should, number one, we can innovate from Kantian to name Kantian. Second, we can reject a philosophical school of thought and create a new path to philosophizing. And third, we can review all philosophical questions and offer a new and novel insights of philosophical reflections. Now, we now go to the three approaches to Filipino philosophy. We know that for Filipino, there are three approaches. Okay? That is the cultural approach, constitutional approach, and the traditional approach. The cultural approach is also known as the anthropological approach. He used cultural instead of anthropological based on the suggestions of Hackney. Since any social science approach should also be, according to him, anthropological, psychological, sociological, basically broad speaking, cultural in nature. According to him, we should also distinguish an ethnophilosopher from a philosopher of culture. The task of the first is to embody whereas the last is, is to disembodied. The former extracts a body philosophical underpinnings of people's languages, folk literature, folk reasoning, and so on, and later reflects on the merits and demerits of one culture. How culture can be meaningful, what essence there is of culture, the ethical dimensions of culture and the life. The ethnophilosophers can be, according to him, should be, okay, a philosopher of culture. But, okay, moreover, there are ethnophilosophers who are simply remain only ethnophilosophers by resisting any meaningful philosophical change of one's culture. Now, let's now go to the second approach, which is, according to him, kind of problematic. Though quite problematic, we need to consider that Ripaldo is also a bibliographer. Without considering the, this approach, he would have done his Filipino philosophy critical bibliography from 1974 to 1999, which was considered by Thomas Rosario as a landmark in the history of research in the works of Filipino philosophical thinkers and scholars, which is according to him no similar achievement of this magnitude, as far as I know, has ever done or published. No one is tempted to assert that this magnus opus, you know, however, that is an ongoing project every five years to a measure in terms of time, effort, sacrifice invested in terms of a measurable value to current future scholars of Filipino philosophy. It is then outstanding, probably, and sort of a scholarship field. So now, to the third approach, the traditional approach is the genuine philosophical approach to him. It answers the question, what is your own philosophy? It is the truly philosophical approach as traditionally used by historian and philosophy. It follows the Greek philosophical model and it numerates Filipino individual philosophers and distinguishes their respective philosophical ideas, which he discussed in his books. 
which according to him, a complete history of Filipino philosophy has yet to be written. Now, let's now go to the third. The contribution in the institutionalization and internationalization of philosophy. His dedication was extended in the institutionalization and internationalization of Filipino philosophy by strengthening the philosophical associations of the country, like Papislinda, PAP, and also the PNPRS, because he believes that Filipino philosophy is an important ideology for nation building. In fact, he has this vision of making an umbrella of philosophy organizations in the country, just like what we have today. USA, as we know, will be able to be, so as we will be able to be for the World Congress of Philosophers, so that we will be recognized as work as philosophers. So thank you very much.